Her had its origin in Hawaii. When the missionaries came to Hawaii the first time, they found a sport the natives practiced called hookie hookie. They took it back, and eventually, the tug of war became an Olympic sport. Both preliminaries between the Dodgers and the Royals, between the Broncos and Dallas, decided in this final event the tug of war. But the all-time classic may well have happened in 1975 between the Minnesota Vikings and the Pittsburgh Steelers. As they pulled and strained and tugged and struggled for the better part of 17 minutes before the decision was finally had by the Minnesota Vikings. In that particular event, I'll never forget Alan Page standing and literally walking away as Mohammed must have done to the mountain. And finally, Minnesota had won it. And the anguish of losing this fierce struggle reflected memorably by Franco Harris. The arms, after a while, you just can't grip anymore. But you just use up so much of your strength that you don't have any more in your, in your hands. Why haven't you got up? <laughs> I'm gonna be down here for a while, too. <laughs> Well, like all things, as time wears on, there'll be change. Now, the athletes, as they engage in the tug of war here on the beach at Waikiki, wrap towels around their bodies, around their arms, and over their shoulders, because the hemp rope cuts when it slides across the naked skin. So a great deal of attention is given not only to the body, but to the posture. Dig and dig until you have a hole where only the shoulders show above it. In the case of Freddie Patek, well, he can't go as deep as George Brett and some of the others because he'll sink out of sight. But the idea of getting as deep as you can so that you can, when necessary, hold, but yet retain some mobility, that's what they try to do. And you can see, when you put that many strong men into a deep hole, it can be virtually impossible to move them. For the Dallas Cowboys, seven pairs of legs Kansas and City even 1,500 pounds. And for the Kansas Anchor City Royals, up. eight pairs of legs, 1,482 pounds. Go. And thus, the question Dallas was in everybody's mind as the contest started, would seven pairs of legs be able to handle eight pairs of legs? Lord James Blair's again doing the officiating at the tug of war pit. The crowd gathered around under the afternoon sun with a temperature more than 80 degrees. And off the very first pull, the Kansas City Royals grabbed the margin of about a foot. Dallas a little bit slow getting back into a whole position. Kansas City got the early initiative and picked up the early advantage. No time limit in the final tug of war for the championship of two teams of 1978. In the preliminaries, there was a 10-minute limit, but the agreement was that there would be no time limit in the final. So once Kansas City had its early margin, the Royals settled back into those deep holes they had dug and went into a hold position. The Cowboys tried to surge back, could not move the eight pairs of legs. Remember, it was seven for Dallas and eight for Kansas City. And thus, the struggle set in in that way. At the beginning, the adrenaline flowing easily and freely. At the beginning, there was enthusiasm. At the beginning, there was an excitement that was to wear and wear and wear. For the Dallas Cowboys, Randy White, Charlie Waters, Cliff Harris, Robert Newhouse, Ralph Neely, Drew Pearson, and Harvey Martin at the anchor. For the Kansas City Royals, Freddie Patek, Hal McRae, Tom Poquette, Amos Otis, Frank White, Daryl Porter, Dennis Leonard, and George Brett. Roger Staubach coaching the Cowboys. Paul Splitthorpe coaching the Royals. You know, Keith, I uh, was talking to Roger Starback about this, and he said in this tug of war, was the most excited he's ever been about any event, sporting event he's ever been associated with. I know last week he lost his voice, exhorting his teammates to go ahead. Kansas City got the initial surge at the start of the tug of war, went into a whole position, 
built it to almost a yard. And hung on. Of time at all has made decisions that they have regretted. In the case of the Dallas Cowboys and the Kansas City Royals, this day may go down in their memory as the day they made a decision they have regretted already. Because they did agree to no time limit in the tug of war. And so it rages on as the shadows keep getting longer and the ache in the muscles grows more pronounced. And once in a while, a temper flares from out of a hole on the beach here at Waikiki, and fatigue is shining from the eyes. Oh, really? <laughs> well, that sounds serious. You know what's funny about this, Keith, is that the more serious these guys get about this, the more they act like little kids. Yeah, but you're not out there with your body aching and hurting right now. You're looking at Harvey Martin. Let's see if he's got any wind to talk with to O.J. Tell me about it, Harvey. What's happening? Oh, boy, I am dying. Simple dying, but I'm going to hold on. How's the sun feeling? It's hot. Real hot. <laughs> oh, it's hot. But then on the other hand, Harvey Martin has provided a hot time for a lot of quarterbacks in the National Football Conference. For example, the Dallas Cowboys had 53 sacks the quarterbacks in 1977 and this big guy out of East Texas State accounted for 23. Not the biggest man in town, 238 pounds, but he knows what he's doing when he puts on his hard hat and goes out to do his thing. He lines up at right in alongside of Randy White. They were the co-MVP in the Super Bowl against the Denver Broncos. Harvey Martin the beautiful Harvey Martin Show on Radio Out of Dallas. Let's visit with the man. A lot of players seem to feel that they can go in just during the weekend on the two-hour meetings, get everything that they need. You know, when a coach is telling you what you have to do, it's fine, but you're not listening to him. You, you're listening to him, but you're not. It's when you're at home by yourself, sitting up and studying on your own that you see it. And you say, ah, you know, because you're the person that's got to do it on Sunday. I'm probably uh, one of the only people that's a uh, died in the wolf fan of the team to play on the team. I go out there and I play. I'm playing as a player wanting to win, and I'm playing as a fan wanting to be number one. This is Harvey Martin for your Dallas Cowboy radio station. Well, the Dallas Cowboys are the Super Bowl champs in 1978. That's a nice feeling. The radio show is uh, my little inside tip. I, I try to tell, tell the people that it's sort of gossip. You know, I sort of gossip with the people about the Dallas Cowboys about five minutes a day during prime time during the day so they can, they're driving home a lot of times and they can listen to the Cowboys and uh, hear about what the Cowboys are doing. And this is something that I like to do. Well, this is the best barbecue in town. <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> The restaurant venture is uh, something now that I'm doing now. Um, I got involved in it on a strange way. I went in to eat one day, and the food was fantastic, but I was the only person there. And uh, I went back again, and I think I did this for about a month, and I finally pulled a guy to the side and said, hey, I think I can help you, and I think you can help me. And we tied together into what I think is going to be a very successful uh, union. It's <laughs> love looking good. Friend Dallas, try some. It's the best in town. I know I'm here. <laughs> mm. How much do you think he would give for one of those ribs right now? 